The Wizard SV Gel and PCR cleanup system is designed to extract and purify DNA fragments of 100 base pairs to 10 kilobase pairs from standard or low melt agarose gels in either tris acetate or tris borate. To begin, gather 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tubes, 95% ethanol, and vacuum adapters. Add the indicated volume of 95% ethanol to the membrane wash solution, then record this addition on the bottle label. Tightly close the bottle cap after each use to prevent evaporation. Load and run the gel using an established protocol. Weigh a 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tube for each DNA fragment and record the weight. Visualize the gel and excise the band of interest. To reduce nicking, irradiate the gel for the absolute minimum time possible. Transfer the gel slice to the weighed microcentrifuge tube and record the weight. Subtract the weight of the empty tube from the total weight to obtain the weight of the gel slice. The gel slice may be stored at 4 degrees Celsius or minus 20 degrees Celsius for up to one week in a tightly closed tube under nuclease-free conditions prior to purification. Recovery from a 1% high melting point agarose is comparable to that from a 1-2% to low melting point agarose. Concentrations of up to 3% high melting point agarose have been tested, though higher concentrations may require a longer time to melt and may show reduced yields. Add membrane binding solution at a ratio of 10 microliters of solution per 10 milligrams of agarose gel slice. Vortex the mixture and incubate at 50 to 65 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes or until the gel slice is completely dissolved. Vortex the tube every few minutes to increase the rate of agarose gel melting. DNA fragments that are larger than 5 kilobases should be mixed gently to prevent shearing. Do not vortex. Mix by inversion. Centrifuge the tube briefly at room temperature to ensure the contents are at the bottom of the tube. The maximum capacity of the column is 350 milligrams of gel mass dissolved in 350 microliters of membrane binding solution. For gel slices greater than 350 milligrams, continue to pass additional sample through the SV mini column until all sample has been processed. The total amount of agarose that can be processed through a single column is approximately 3.5 grams. The maximum binding capacity of the membrane is approximately 40 micrograms. As little as 10 nanograms has been successfully purified. Attach one vacuum adapter to a vacuum manifold port for each dissolved gel slice or PCR amplification. Insert an SV mini column into the vacuum adapter until it fits snugly in place. Transfer the dissolved gel mixture or PCR amplification to the SV mini column and incubate for one minute at room temperature. Apply a vacuum to pull the liquid completely through the SV mini column. Wash the column by adding 700 microliters of membrane wash solution. Make sure any droplets remaining on the sides of the SV mini column from the previous step are washed away. Apply a vacuum to pull the liquid through the SV mini column. Repeat the wash with 500 microliters of membrane wash solution. After turning off the vacuum and venting the manifold, transfer the SV mini column to a collection tube. Centrifuge the SV mini column assembly for 5 minutes at 16,000 times gravity. Empty the collection tube and recentrifuge the column assembly for one minute with a microcentrifuge lid open to allow evaporation of any residual ethanol. Carefully transfer the SV mini column to a new 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tube, being careful not to wet the bottom of the mini column with the flow through. Apply 50 microliters of nuclease-free water directly to the center of the column without contacting the membrane. Incubate at room temperature for one minute. Centrifuge for one minute at 16,000 times gravity. 
Discard the SV mini column and stir the microcentrifuge tube containing the eluted DNA at 4 degrees Celsius or minus 20 degrees Celsius.